Good afternoon. Welcome to Mass at St. Michael the Archangel Parish. Our celebrant today is Father Branson, and today we celebrate Christ the King. This Mass is being offered for the intentions of the people of St. Michael the Archangel Parish. For more information about our parish or volunteer activities, please head to our website, website at stmichaels77.org. The parish center and office will be closed November, Thursday, November 24th, and Friday, November 25th. There will be a communion service on Friday the 25th following the 8 o'clock rosary. No CCD is this coming Tuesday and Wednesday, and the second collection today is for the Community Outreach Program. Please note, it is our custom not to leave Mass until the choir has finished singing. As we pray, prepare for Mass, let us silence our cell phones and observe a moment of silence. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. Brother, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess. on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things, and your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation set free from slavery may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book, the second book of Samuel. In those days, all the tribes of Israel came to David in Hebron and said, Here we are, your bone and your flesh. In days past, when Saul was our king, it was you who led the Israelites out and brought them back. And the Lord said to you, you shall shepherd my people Israel, and shall be commander of Israel. 
When all the elders of Israel came to David in Hebron, King David made an agreement with them, and therefore the Lord, and there before the Lord, they anointed him king of Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm is, Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. I rejoiced because they said to me, We will go up to the house of the Lord, and now we have set foot within your gates, O Jerusalem. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. Jerusalem built as a city with a compact unity. To, the, it, to it the tribes go up, the tribes of the Lord. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. According to the decree for Israel, to give thanks to the name of the Lord, in it are set up just judgment seats for the house of David. Let us go rejoicing to the house of the Lord. A reading from the second the letter a reading from the letter of Saint Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, let us give thanks to the Father who has made you fit to share in the inheritance of the Holy Ones in light. He delivered us from the power of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him were created all things in heaven and on earth, the visible and the invisible, whether thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created through him and for him. He is before all things and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he himself might be preeminent. For in him all the fullness was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile all things for him, making peace by the blood on his, of his cross, through him, whether those on earth or those in heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the kingdom of our father David that is to come. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. The rulers sneered at Jesus and said, he saved others, let him save himself. If he is the chosen one, the Christ of God, even the soldiers jeered at him. As they approached to offer him wine, they called out, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. Above him there was an inscription that read, This is the king of the Jews. Now one of the criminals hanging there reviled Jesus, saying, Are you not the Christ? Save yourself and us. The other, however, rebuking him, said in reply, have you no fear of God, for you are subject to the same condemnation? And indeed, we have been condemned justly, for the sentence we receive corresponds to our crimes. But this man has done nothing criminal. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus replied to him, Amen, I say to you, 
Today you'll be with me in paradise. The Gospel of the Lord. In our first reading, we have the story of David becoming king, king of all the tribes. But what they give us in our first reading is such a small snapshot, it doesn't really lend itself to seeing what's really going on. Saul was anointed privately king of Israel and Judah, the two community, the two tribes that are around. And Saul was then acclaimed publicly, but he was anointed privately. And Saul wasn't the nicest guy. He tried to kill David, he tried to kill people, he tried to do all kinds of things. He tried to make alliances where God said, don't make alliances. He went to fortune tellers when God said, don't go there. He raised the dead through fortune tellers, all this kind of thing. So he lost the kingship. Eventually, when he went into battle against the Philistines, the traditional enemies of the Israelite people, he was killed. And so his death brought about an emptiness. Prior to Saul, Samuel had told the people, why do you want a king? Why do you want a king to tax you and to take your young men into battle and to take your young girls into servitude in the, in the government in the castle? Why do you want this? And the people said, well, everybody else has a king. We want one too. So the people, for some reason, we people always seem to want to have somebody in authority over us. But we always end up with kings, one way or another. Right now they have King Charles III in England. And they've been reporting on how many fits and tantrums he's thrown already. Can you imagine? After a mother like that, he's throwing fits. One day a pen blew up in his hand and got ink all over his fingers and he threw a really big fit. The other day he had a meltdown. Maybe Diana was right. Maybe I'm not worthy to be king. His wife sent him to his sister and said, straighten him up. You know, you just can't get good kings anymore. <laughs> Which is a good thing because we have a different one. So David was anointed, was David came along, and after Saul had not been able to kill him, David went out into the countryside. And he had his first wife, Ahinoam. And then one day, a leader of the Canaanite people up in around Hebron decided to insult David and his family. So David grabbed the warriors and he went up and he was going to kill this guy. But this guy's wife, Abigail, prepared a feast for David and his family and went down and said, please, let the sin be on my head and if you accept this, then maybe we can make peace. So it worked. David said, blessed be you for doing this. She went back and told her husband what she had done. He died of a heart attack. So David took her for his second wife. Both wives are from the Hebron region. Hebron is a word meaning alliance. And it's where a lot of alliances were formed. And we see in 855 BC, David starts forming alliances. He, he asked God after the death of Saul, where should I move? And God says, go to Hebron. So he takes his wives and go up there. And it just so happens to be the wives' hometown. So David has connections. And so they get up there, and they anoint him king of Judah, only half of the Israelite community. And he ruled in Judah for seven years. During this seven years, he had battles with all kinds of tribes. And won, because he listened to God. God told him how to go in battle. Then he went against the Philistines, and he asked God how to do that. And God told him, well, in this battle, engage them head on. And so he did. And he won. And he drove them away.
But the Philistines were very hard-headed. They came back and they met him somewhere else. So David said, okay, God, what's the battle plan this time? God said, sneak around from the back and attack them. And he did. And he won over the Philistines. During this time, the seven years, David continued to take on wives and concubines and having lots of kids. But once he defeated the Philistines, we get to our first reading. The people in Israel came to him now because they recognize how powerful he is, how much God is blessing him and is behind him. So they come to King David and they say, you are flesh of our flesh, bone of our bone. In other words, you're an Israelite. You're a child of Abraham. So why don't we, you be king over us? And so they did. They anointed him publicly as king over Israel. And he was able to unite the two into one kingdom. And this lasted 33 years under him. His son Solomon, much longer after him. But the difference between David and Saul, our mistranslation here we have in our first reading, it says, when Saul was our king. That's not what it says in the original reading, right in the original writings. It says, when Saul lorded it over us, was king over us. Now, they say, lead Israelite and bring them back. This is the shepherd's description of a leader. So David becomes a leader like a shepherd. He becomes not a tyrant, not a dictator, not someone who throws temper tantrums because a pen blows up, but he leads like a shepherd. He becomes a caretaker king, not Saul's version. So David becomes a king in the shepherd's sense of the word. And, and David knows how to do this because before he was a king, before he was a married Saul's daughter, he was a shepherd. And so he leads the people out. He brings them back like a shepherd leads the sheep out of the sheepfold and brings them back at night. Then David did something else that's not mentioned here. David immediately decided to move the new capital of the empire, the Jewish empire, Israelite empire, to Jerusalem. But there was a problem. The Jebusite tribe had Jerusalem. So he had to go in and fight the battle with them and win. And when he named the city after he had won, he called it the city of David. Isn't that great? If I went in and became mayor of Mesa, I could say the city of Father Branson. But anyway, why did he do that? Because to fulfill prophecy to fulfill prophecy. The Messiah was to come from the lineage of David. He doesn't see it yet. He hasn't heard it yet. But that's why he's doing this. God, He said to God, once he brings the Ark of the Covenant in, once he gets Jerusalem, he brings the, tries to bring the Ark of the Covenant in. And God says, no, don't build me a house, meaning temple. I will build you a house, meaning dynasty. And for several hundred years, they had kings coming from David. And so we have David uniting the government with the religion. It wasn't division. They united the both under one umbrella in a new location. So we have a new kind of king that comes to the throne. We have a new kind of king that leads the people. And since then, very few kings have been able to pull that off in our history as a human, being, as a human race and Christianity as well. Very few kings. In fact, the kings that have been able to do that, they were automatically upon their death named saints because they could lead the people like a shepherd and not lord it over them. And we look at this because it affects the gospel and how we interpret the gospel. Jesus is being crucified. And we're like, geez, today we celebrate Jesus Christ, the king of the universe. What's the king of the universe doing on a cross? Because it becomes his throne. Where is the sign that proclaims him king? Right above him in four languages. Jesus Christ, king of the Jews. They missed it because he wasn't king of the Jews. He was king of the universe. But they couldn't understand that then. And so he was put up on a cross. Well, all the people have been talking about him being the Messiah. And so the, Russian, the Roman soldiers, they start making fun of him. The crowd makes fun of him jeering at him on the cross. 
But they don't understand that Jesus is in his throne. His throne is the cross. Because Jesus never lorded it over the people. We read the gospel stories. Jesus led the people. Jesus brought the people back in. He never once lorded it over them. He is a shepherd king in the line of King David. David set the standard. David showed the way it should be. And Jesus came along to fulfill that. So our king rules from a cross. Now he rules from heaven. But then he ruled on a cross. And it's that cross, the throne, that has key importance for us. Because as we see in the gospel today, there's two criminals. One on his right, one on his left. And two reactions. The one criminal reviles him, just like the people, just like the soldiers. If you're the Messiah, get us down off of here. The other one begs for mercy. When a king is on his throne, one of his job descriptions and job functions is to hear cases involving criminal activity, involving civil restitution. So he becomes a judge when he's sitting on the throne. Jesus is sitting on his throne on the cross today in our gospel story. And you have one person come before him, doesn't beg for mercy, just sneers at him. Not saved. But we have another person that comes before the king with his case. Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Mercy, Lord. And Jesus has mercy on him and alleviates his crime and his punishment and saves him. This is the king we have. Not the king we think of when we think of earthly kings. But our king rules from a cross, sits on a cross as a throne. And our king has mercy if we ask for it. Our king grants us mercy whenever we ask. So our king is a different kind of king. Because our king wants us in the kingdom with him. The kingdom of heaven. As the good thief recognized, Jesus' kingdom wasn't yet here. It will be one day. Right now it's in heaven. So our king is a little bit different. And to be king of the universe in heaven, the world doesn't understand. But he's still up there saying, hey, all you have to do is ask for mercy. And I want to save you. I want to bring you back. That's a totally different kind of king than we're used to. But it's one we should get used to. One we should bring ourselves close to. And always say, mercy, Lord. Have mercy on me. God bless you. I believe. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to Jeff, living in the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life the world to come. Amen. Our King reigns from his cross. He reigns in his eternal kingdom where he intercedes for us. For our loving Redeemer, let us make our prayers of intercession. For the church, the body of Christ, that its royal head may draw all believers into the visible unity of one body, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For all who exercise authority in our world today, that they may learn from the King who came to suffer and to serve, let us pray to the Lord. Amen. For all prisoners of conscience, that they may remain firm amidst sufferings, inspired by Christ, who was unjustly condemned. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For hope in the future, that we may look forward to the final triumph of, reign, of the reign of Christ, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have passed through death, that Christ who forgave the good thief may welcome them in paradise. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, please grant our petitions. For you have called us out of darkness and created a place for us in the kingdom of your beloved Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness, as eternal priest and King of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption, and making all created things subject to his rule, he might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so the angels and archangels with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glories without end. We are claimed. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. To you, therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world. Together, your servant Francis, our Pope, and Edward, our Bishop, and all those holding to the truth and on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants who are living. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer this sacrifice of praise, while they offer for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord, Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command to be delivered from eternal damnation, and count among the flock of those you have chosen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve all this offering, in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. With eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his Almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. Once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as one should be pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high, the sight of your divine majesty. To all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, be filled every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Bless also your servants who are those sinners, hope in your abundant mercies. Graciously grant some share of fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs. With John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. God, ministry we beseech you into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon. Through Christ our Lord, let me continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. The Savior's command formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorifying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, this Mass is ended. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in hell. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. <clears throat> Thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking to ruin his souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most sacred heart of Jesus. To you, O blessed Joseph, do we come in our afflictions, and having implored 